confusion at Labour after a U-turn over Britain's nuclear deterrent. This morning, Jeremy Corbyn appeared to cast a doubt on Trident's future. This afternoon, his party shuts down speculation. Killed by thieves, the man run down by his own car in the middle of the night. And the Royals lend a helping hand at the marathon as one runner helps another over the line. This is ITV News with Charlene White. Good evening. It was meant to be Jeremy Corbyn's opportunity to set out his vision for a different Britain ahead of June's snap election. But instead, Labour have spent the day once again being forced to clarify their position over the country's nuclear deterrent. This morning, Mr Corbyn said its future was under discussion. But later, a party spokesperson insisted Trident remains official Labour policy. Here's our political correspondent, Libby Vina. Six days into this campaign, not the best time you might think to reopen old wounds over Labour defence policy. But that's just what Jeremy Corbyn did today, suggesting the Trident nuclear deterrent would have to be looked at again. We will have a strategic defence review immediately, which will include all aspects of defence, as most incoming governments do, actually. In fact, I think all have. And we would then look at the situation at that time. But what would be in the manifesto? We haven't uh, completed work on the manifesto yet. As you'd expect, we're less than 100 hours into this election campaign. He may be a lifelong supporter of unilateral disarmament, but party policy is to renew Trident. Last July, nearly two-thirds of Labour MPs voted with the government in support of a new generation of nuclear submarines. Within hours of Mr Corbyn's remarks today, the party issued this clarification. The decision to renew Trident has been taken, and Labour supports that. The sort of confusion that the Conservatives were only too happy to exploit. It's just staggering and it just shows the utter chaos that there is with the Labour Party and the utter chaos there would be if Jeremy Corbyn was able to get the keys or a foothold in 10 Downing Street under a, what would be a chaotic coalition. What's looked awkward in opposition, not supporting a key party policy, will certainly come under increasing scrutiny as Mr Corbyn makes his pitch to get into government. Libby, as you said, we're six days into this election and yet another distraction for Labour. Well, they say that divided parties don't win elections and inadvertently or not, Jeremy Corbyn today shone a giant spotlight on one of the biggest divisions within his party, that is over defence. Now, he's a unilateralist. Most of his MPs believe that Trident should be renewed. In fact, they voted for it. And I think this is extremely difficult for him. It's uh, the source of a huge amount of tension at the moment and has been ever since he became leader. I think the idea that he could uh, ask the electorate to back him as a future Prime Minister and still have these divisions over a nuclear deterrent uh, is really unsustainable. OK, Libby, thanks very much. Police in Greater Manchester have launched a murder investigation after car thieves ran over and killed the car's owner when they stole it last night. 35-year-old Michael Samwell was killed as he tried to stop the thieves driving off. Angus Walker has more. At around three o'clock this morning, neighbours said they heard shouting in this normally quiet street in the Manchester suburb of Chalton. According to the police, thieves were stealing a car and the owner had gone out to try to stop them. 35-year-old Michael Samwell, a former naval officer, suffered multiple injuries during the incident and later died. Local residents say car crime has become common. I've been born and bred in this area. Uh, many of my friends have been victims to such crimes. Uh, even myself, it's come to a point where it's that common and the only thing we can do is work as a community to prevent these kind of things happening. Detectives are appealing for witnesses and have launched a murder inquiry. Members of the public are always going to help us, uh, especially in a crime like this. But what I would say on this occasion is criminal fraternity, if you're the family of the person that's done this, you can't protect them. This could have happened to any one of us. The stolen Audi sports car was later found abandoned, badly damaged, just a few miles away. Mr Samwell's wife, who was there when her husband tried to stop the thieves, is being comforted by her family. Angus Walker, ITV News. 
Police in Northern Ireland say dissident Republicans are responsible for leaving a bomb next to primary school in North Belfast last night. It was discovered just before midnight. Nearby homes were evacuated as the bomb squad dealt with the device, which police described as viable and reckless. Arthur Collins, the boyfriend of reality TV star Fern McCann, has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder after an acid attack at a nightclub. The 25-year-old was arrested at a property in Northamptonshire yesterday. And the American actress Erin Moran has died at the age of 56. She was famous for playing Joni on the show Happy Days. Many of her former co-stars, including Ron Howard and Henry Winkler, have paid tribute. The French people have been voting in their millions in the first round of their presidential election amid heavy security. There's just over an hour left until the polls close and a vote that's seen as a test for the spread of populism around the world. Our Europe editor James Mates reports from Paris. Rarely can an election in Europe have been conducted amid such high visibility, almost oppressive security. France, still living under a state of emergency, was already nervous about this poll. The attack three days ago in the heart of Paris only confirmed they were right to be so. Despite that, turnout is reported to be as high as it normally is, as French electors pick up voting slips with the names of no fewer than 11 candidates, one of which they put into an envelope and then the ballot box. For those candidates, it is all about finishing first or second to survive into the head-to-head -head second round in a fortnight's time. With this man, Emmanuel Macron, the favourite to head today's poll and ultimately win the presidency. But it is incredibly close. Just a percentage point or two between him and Marine Le Pen of the far-right Front National. If she were to do better than expected and actually top the poll today, the shockwaves would rattle governments and markets across Europe. Another anti-Euro, anti-EU candidate, Jean-Luc Mélenchon of the far left, is also a real contender. The nightmare scenario for the European mainstream would be him and Le Pen both getting through to the final round. Unlikely, but it would only take a small swing towards both. The Conservative former Prime Minister François Fillon was once thought to have this election in the bag before being charged with fraud for allegedly paying his wife from public funds. He'll be discreetly hoping that recent events may prompt a swing back to the right among voters now worried about security above all else. What no one knows is whether the Paris attack has had a late impact on this vote. Last minute polls are not allowed here. It is only adding to the uncertainty. When those polls close in about an hour's time, there will be uh, an exit poll published. The result may become clear, but if it's still very, very close, even that may not be accurate enough to really distinguish who has got through. Here at the Emmanuel Macron uh, party, there is a nervous confidence that their man will make it through. The polls would have had to have been very wrong for a week or so, uh, uh, or more than that even, uh, for him to, to go out. The other thing that people will be looking at is just how many French voters have voted maybe as many as half, for the extremist parties of either left or right. OK, James, thanks very much. Football and Arsenal are through to the FA Cup final after beating Manchester City 2-1 at Wembley. It took extra time to separate the two sides. Alexis Sanchez reacting quickest in the penalty area to snatch the winner. They'll play Chelsea in the final when they return to Wembley in May. And Celtic beat old firm rivals Rangers 2-0 in today's Scottish Cup semi-final. Callum McGregor opened the scoring after 10 minutes before Scott Sinclair added the second from the penalty spot. Finally, Princes William and Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge cheered on a record number of runners in today's London Marathon. They were there as part of their joint campaign to raise awareness of mental health. But there was also an individual act of charity, as Geraint Vincent reports. <laughs> Runners in the London Marathon are never short of encouragement, but this year they had some royal support. We drove in here and saw people sprinting up and down. I was like, that is surely not a good tactic. Probably a better start. Their Heads Together campaign, which aims to banish the stigma surrounding mental health issues, was the marathon's charity of the year. So the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry were here to get things started. There were more than 40,000 people taking part this year, 
most of them in need of some water at some point on the way round, and the Duke and Duchess were on distribution duty later on in the race. And for those runners not too concerned about their time, there was an opportunity for a regal high five, or a selfie, or just some moral support. At the front, there were two Kenyans who weren't hanging around. Mary Katani smashed a world record in the women's race, and Daniel Wanjiru claimed victory in the men's. That was after Great Britain's David Weir sprinted home for a seventh win in the men's wheelchair race. There was another kind of winner on the mall, though. When one competitor's body started to break down in the last few hundred metres, a fellow runner sacrificed his race to help him out. I was kind of shouting at him, like, the finish is just over there, we can do this, you know, we'll finish together. And he's like, I've got to finish, I've got to finish. I'm like, you will finish. And the crowd were incredible, they were all, like, cheering. And I think that really helped him as well. With so many charities involved, helping others who are struggling is always a big part of the London Marathon. Today, that principle crossed the finish line too. Geraint Vincent, ITV News. Oh, well done to all the runners. Right, that's it from us. We'll be back with the late news just after 10. So until then, goodbye.